someone whose name you've heard over and over, over again. Harvey Weisenberg is here. He keeps coming back because this issue is so important to him, but not just him. He knows it's important to everybody. That's why he keeps coming back. He keeps coming back to our state capitol. It's such a pleasure to have him here today. Let's give a big round of applause. To share with you that God gave me and my wife Ellen an angel. Ricky is my angel. He's a child who could never speak, cry, and is blind. He gave me a saint, my wife, my wife who only got love and gave love to Ricky. Her happiest day in our lives was a Ricky day when she could be with Ricky gave me a mission, and that's why I'm here today. My mission is to be able to advocate for families with those people who have people with special needs and dis developmental disabilities, any disability. That's my mission, and God sent me here. And I'm here to let you know, because I want to talk to you. I heard love a lot of times today. I'm going to tell you a very quick story. My wife, the last day that she was not in a hospital and passing away it was a Ricky day. And it's a warm day because her love and care and her devotion. I just said, oh, it's a long, hard day. No, it's a happy day. And it was a happy day for Ellen. And that night, I took her to an emergency room. And a couple of days later, God was there, by the way, she passed away. But I want to tell you about what love is all about. Because now I go to Ricky at least twice a week to take care of him and give him love. And I think about the life that he has. Can't communicate, can't see, and yet people are taking care of him. And who are these people? Well, we're doing a little research on that. But I want to tell you, I was feeding Ricky and holding his hand. And I said, Mommy loved you so much, Ricky. I love you, you're so good. You're just such a wonderful child. And he squeezed my hand. And like lightning from above came, went through me, because I felt his love. And now I really understand how all these years, over 50 years, how my wife felt because she was happy. And the happiest day was the love that she was getting from a child who could not speak or see. And that I felt that. And you know, it's amazing because I put out an ad on our website. We have a website and an app. And I showed a picture of him and my hand, and I wrote on it, special children give love. And this is why we're here, because we all love our special children. But people don't understand, they just don't understand the communication that does exist. And I always said, and I always focus, that we should focus on what our kids can do and not what they can't do. But today, we're here for a purpose. I mean, it really is upsetting to me because the Associated Press called me recently and he asked me a question. And I said, I'm concerned because we have a crisis in the state of New York. And it's critical because we're down in our service providers. People can't afford to pay their bills. They can't afford to pay their rent. And they are leaving. And if you have a decline in your, in your ability to provide the resources necessary, then how does that impact? What are the consequences? Well, we pass bills. Democrats and Republicans pass bills. If you're going to go to a hospital, you have to have a one-on-one -on -one to advocate for your child. And if you're going to have somebody for a medical, you have to have a one-on-one. -on -one. So they take somebody out of the house to go with your child. Well, I went to the hospital down in Long Island. And we had a serious situation because we had three special children from my house in the hospital. And I went there and I put on a gown, a mask, because I was there to take care of Ricky and feed him. There was nobody there to feed our children because they couldn't take people out of the house. They didn't have enough staff. And now we're going to have a decline in our staff. How is that going to impact the quality of care and the health and safety of our children? We can't do this. And it's not fair because I want you to know I was in Harlem. We were all over. We were upstate. We are up there now to be able to interview direct caregivers. And I want to share this with you. Dolores, the lady that we interviewed, wonderful lady, she does the food to 16 people, 
And the menu has to be very diversified because the needs of every client is different. You know, Ricky's on puree food, that's a whole story. But other people have different diets. And she said, I can't stay. I said, what do you mean? She said, I can't pay, I can't pay my bills. Now everybody that I know in direct care, and I'm talking 50 years, I mean, I'm going back. We went right to Wasaic and Willowbrook. We were there. My son almost starved to death. He was almost scalded to death. He was in the hospital with other sepsis infections and things. Who was there to take care of them? Our direct caregivers. So if we don't have these people, and we can't retain the people that we have, then we have a crisis and a critical situation. That's why I'm here, to make people aware that are gonna make the decisions to understand the consequences of what we have. Now I'm gonna be a little different now, because I'm, I'm appealing. Governor, be our leader, be a hero. Listen to the voice of the people. Give the money, put the money in the budget. Don't make this legislature fight to be able to get the resources that are necessary for the health and safety of the most vulnerable population in our state. Put the money in there, work together. When I was here and I worked with the governors, including Mario Cuomo and his, and his wonderful wife, we worked together and we had success. We need some success now. Here's a population that needs all that we can do to give them dignity and respect and a healthy and safe environment. They can't do that without direct care trained professionals. We can't get them unless we pay them. When people flipping hamburgers make more money than people taking care of other human beings, this is a tragedy. The whole world is listening, and I really want everybody here to know the website that we have. It's a resource center on the internet for all families. Anything that you want to know is on our, on our website and on our app. And it's there and it's free, and it's in English and Spanish. Anybody, people from all over the country are saying thank you and God bless you. Now I'm saying to you, reach out. Do the best that you can to advocate for why we're here today. You know, it's not dollars, it's people. More important, I don't care how much money is in the budget, there's a lot of money in the budget, but for why? What's more important than the people who need it the most? And that's our vulnerable population and our direct caregivers. Be fair to direct care. Thank you and God bless you.